Yo, what is good, YouTube? What's up, PlayStation Nation? Jay Bari here, and I'm back with another video giving my Babylon Fall review. Yes, Babylon Fall. I finally completed the game, and I'm here to actually give my review. I know it's a very, very, very <laughs> rare thing to do, especially within this gaming community and industry. But um, I like to complete games before I review them. So let's go and talk about it. Here is my Babylon's Fall J. Bari review. So first and foremost, let's get into it. Um, Babylon Fall overall thoughts. I think Babylon Fall is a pretty good game. Um, you know, uh, when, we, when we first saw the game, uh, I was definitely hyped for it because of all the things that they shown throughout the trailer. Some of those things that they show in that first initial trailer, you can't do, which is very disappointing. Uh, but overall, the gameplay still stands up. So I'm going to break this review down in like a few categories. We have like graphics. We're going to talk about that. Uh, story. Um, gameplay. And, you know, overall, this like replay and fun factor um, uh, with the game. So let's get into the graphics because the graphics of this game. It's not really here to pull you in. And I'm in in the beginning of this video, I just showed you guys pretty much the, the whole login process of like Babylon Fall. I'm going to be showing you some menu stuff as well. Um, just to give you guys a, a gist of what you're going to be doing on a day to day basis when you play this game. Because there's a lot of menu management. There's a lot of like gear management here uh, in this game. And um, yeah, this is a games as a service game. Uh, so... This is a games as a service to its entirety. <laughs> so if you guys don't like games as a service or live service games, then most likely it's not a game for you. But um, if you don't mind those things or you don't you don't have like a hate towards those games, then you might want to check this game out. So let's talk about the graphics where uh, the graphics are probably the, the, the weakest aspect of Babylon Fall where um you know when this game got when this game got first revealed it wasn't always the the best looking game but i felt like it definitely took a, a hit you know later on when they showed it in e3 I'm like damn it's, it looks it looks a little bit more it looks it looks worse than how it was first revealed uh in my opinion and yeah like graphically i think this game is the weakest aspect of the game um but i see the i see the 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 goal where they try to make when it when it's this painting this renaissance painting that they're going for this look that they're trying to go for and uh overall i'm not the biggest fan of the look of the game uh especially when it comes to like character designs and stuff like that i'm not the biggest fan because i feel like the the character creation is bland you don't really have a lot of options uh, to create a character and the look of the character, even the skin color of the character. Uh, but the look of the game, it eventually grew on me uh, where I was like, oh, you know what? Uh, after all these a bunch of hours I played in the game, I'm not really like tripping over the graphics of the game. But the gameplay is what stand up. Also, I'm showing you guys that there's crossplay here in the game where somebody on PC is actually uh, playing with us on the PlayStation side as well. I want to be showing you guys that multiple times in this uh, video. So yeah, graphically, it is not the strongest uh, part of this game uh, where I think the graphics is not going to be pulling people in like that. Um, you know, some people might be turned away just due to how it looks graphically, especially for like a PS5 game. You know, when it comes to PS5, people want those crisp graphics and all that stuff but i will say this though performance wise this game does not hitch up the frame rate on this game is rock solid uh there's no like screen tearing especially when you have like multiple people playing with you so this is an online co-op game um as well and you can be doing all your super abilities everything you know all your 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 getting coffin stuff and nothing about this game is going to make the frame rate drop i've played with multiple i played this game multiple times with like three other players and it's just like nothing about this game is going to make this the frame rate drop so if you guys are keen on like performance and stuff like that 
then this game is, uh, I, I can safely say that this game is rock solid and it would not drop a frame at all, especially on PS5. I'm playing on the PS5 version. Um, so yeah, I was really happy about the frame rate. I'm really happy about the overall performance because, you know, that, that matters, you know what I mean? If, if, if the game was ugly <laughs> and the frame rate wasn't good, you know, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have been a good sign there in my personal opinion, but you know the game is not the best looking game out there but the frame rate the the uh the performance it's it's rock solid um so yeah so there's a lot of aspects to this game as far as the online play um choosing to to play online you can you can go you can play this game you know offline if you want to uh you just will have to like ready up right away uh because right when you pick a quest it automatically it automatically start matchmaking you um, with other people that's probably choosing that same quest or that people in your HQ that are, uh, you know, probably just looking to party up so they can just go to party quest or whatnot. But if you don't want to play with anyone, you just wanted to, you know, solo dolo, you can just quickly press triangle and ready up and, you know, it will quickly go, um, you know, into the mission. So I kind of like the multiplayer aspect of the game. It's, it's pretty simple. It's not really difficult. It's not really having this whole bunch of layers on top of it. Uh, if you want to play with your friend, you pretty much just send them, send your friend uh, the HQ code. Because each time you log into the game, they give you like a new code uh, for your HQ. And once your friend get that HQ code, they can just easily join into your HQ, your headquarters. And uh, from there, you know, when you select a message, I mean, not a message, uh, a, a, a quest you know your friend or you can just go to party quest and boom right there you just party up so yeah in, in my opinion i think the the the, the co-op aspect is very simple um it's very it's it, it's better than a lot of the the, the games of the service co-op uh <laughs> you know co-op play you know if you look at like the souls games or heck even some of these uh like monster hunter games I feel like the co-op play has always kind of been annoying just to get people in your party and, and play, uh, you know, games together. But this game is very, very simple. Especially the matchmaking, they made it very simple uh, with the matchmaking. Um, so, yeah, graphically, the weakest point, this game is an online game, the games of the service. I think the games of the service uh, aspect of this game is, is pretty good. Uh, this is one of the, the games of the service that they're pretty generous here uh, with what they give you. Uh, in this game, so you, you you're constantly getting money so you can buy equipment uh, in this game. Uh, you're constantly getting gear and equipment, so you're getting accessories, you're getting weapons, you're getting equipment to level up and uh, you know get your status, your, your stats up there. Uh, as the games as a service is very generous, you know what I mean, and and they're not shy to give you like a blueprint for like a, an amazing weapon like the the the. the uh, the bow and arrow that you see on my my back, it's like a legendary like blueprint that I that I got from just playing the game and um, you know I just created the weapon and boom, it was pretty pretty easy. So yeah, I I, I like the fact that you know they reward you for just playing the game. You know a lot of games of service they try to get you to to buy into things and if you want this cool weapon you're gonna have to buy something. This game you just pretty much play play play. You're going to get your materials. You're going to get your, uh, you know, equipment. You're going to get your stuff in this game, um, which is which is amazing. And I like that. Um, so, yeah, it's very, very generous as a games as a service. And, um, yeah, I think the I think the games as a service aspect is has been done really, really well uh, within this game. Here's another co-op play that I'm doing um, in the game as well. But, uh, yeah. Uh, games of service is good. Graphics is meh, uh, and the performance is amazing. So let's get into the gameplay aspect of it. Gameplay, I I love the gameplay, man. Um, originally, the the trailer showed a lot that you can do in this game, right? Um, and some of the stuff is like these the, with the, using with the Gideon coffin, which is that that item that you have on your back that holds up to four weapons. And also comes with abilities like you know like a soul vault or um i think it's like soul leech and and so it's a whole bunch of soul stuff that they have in the game uh but depending on the race that you you pick you get to have a different like dynamics ability 
um, with your Gideon Coffin. So the race that I have, I get to use the Soul Vault, which in my opinion, originally when I saw the Soul Vault and like the trailers and stuff like that, and especially the first trailer, it was definitely more hype than what it is now. What it is now, it's not like it's a, it's not a bad move. It, it's, it's pretty cool because it, 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 it leaves you airborne if you want to. But my, my issue with the Soul Vault now is that it, it is too slow. And they do have aspects where you can like speed it up and um, you can you can you can pretty much customize your Gideon coughing for certain for your, for certain playstyles. But in my opinion, it's just way too slow. Also, what's disappointing is that you you can't soul vault in the air uh, like it was originally shown in uh, in the trailers. From from my gameplay, from my uh, experience, you cannot soul vault in the air, which was kind of disappointing because. You know, I like to launch enemies up in the air and then, you know, you know, do a jump cancel and stuff like that uh, with, with my combos. But you can't do the soul fall in the air. So that was kind of disappointing to kind of let down. I was kind of let down, um, you know, after I couldn't really do that because the first trailer did show you can do all of that stuff. Uh, maybe I'm going to explore a little bit more and see if I can. But I tried everything to try to do it. And nope, uh, it, it, it didn't let me do it. A big con as well when it comes to the gameplay is some is is the camera. The camera angles sometimes can 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 ruin the experience of what you're doing, especially when it comes to some of the level design. Uh, like say there's like a big patch of grass or something like that, the camera sometimes will pan around and just like yo, you, it will just block your vision. Like, are you purposely trying to block my vision so I can struggle in the game? Uh, so yeah, the camera can be a little bit wonky at times. Uh, but it's not like it's not like it's a common thing, you know what I mean? Because you can move your camera, but sometimes it just get to these angles where it's like, damn, you know, why is it trying to block and impair my vision? Um, so yeah, gameplay wise, uh, the camera is like a big con, and the soul vault after you after you unlock it, in my opinion, it, it, it was it was disappointing a bit. Uh, so if you are on the ground. If you are on the ground, you can soul vault to enemies in the air. But if, say, you were to launch somebody up or say you're already in the air, you cannot soul vault um, towards the enemy, which, in my opinion, would have made the gameplay much more fun. And, uh, yeah, it would have it left it more fun, in my opinion. Uh, but I do love the gameplay. I do love the aspects of, like, I like all the other weapons. Like, typically, I would have, like, my mainstay weapons. But I find myself constantly like switching and moving over and, and, and picking other weapons. There's times where I'll I'll pick that shield, you know what I mean, depending on what enchantments or perks it is giving me. There's times I'll pick that rod because that rod, even though it's very slow, that thing leaves that fireball. That fireball for the rod is is very, very powerful. You know, the hammer is a slow weapon as well, but the hammer is a very powerful thing where it can crumple a lot of the enemies and, and like give them, uh, have them go into like this crush state, uh, which is which is important uh, in this game where you can just do a whole bunch of damage uh, to your enemies. But I, I, overall, my favorite weapons I'll have to say are the swords and the bow and arrow. I think the bow and arrow in this game is very cheap. Uh, it is it is the weakest out of all of the weapons, but. It, the, the, the multiplier of the damage that it can lead up to is crazy uh, when it comes to the bow and arrow. So, especially when you, the bow and arrow I have right here is fully charged up. And you fully charge that thing up, it's like multiple shots is hitting. It's, you see it, it goes like 300, 300, 500. It can just rack up where, you know, the hammer, it'd be like one hit for like 2,000. But, you know, if you're just multiple, if you're getting multiple hits with a bow and arrow, it's just gonna, it's just gonna add up with damage. And uh, you can see enemies that's depleting real fast uh, when it comes with the bow and arrow. But yeah, I like the swords that's due to the combo uh, structure of the swords. I like the, the, the jump cancel pop up that you can do. Um, I like the heavy attack where it's a circular heavy, heavy attack and you can do a lot of damage. Uh, also, what's really cool about this game is the fact that um, pretty much later in the game you unlock like different... Uh, I want to call it different attack modes uh, for each weapon. So you have like standard attack, you have power, and then you have technical where they all offer different play styles 
uh, to the game. So standard is what you see right now where everybody have standard on lock where you can just do simple combos and whatnot. Then you have like a power mode uh, type uh, attack mode where it's just going for more like heavier swings and it's much slower. But when you hit somebody, you're hitting somebody. Then you have the technical aspect where technical is like more like for like veterans that, you know, enjoy hack and slash games. You can definitely see like you can do much more things on the technical aspect. Because each time you're attacking, you have these cancel windows where you see this this light this this white flash each weapon that you're using, where you can just you can just do much more combos, giving you options to do much more combos. But the timing is more precise as far as how you can do the combo. Uh, but all modes feel pretty good. My biggest my biggest issue when it comes to the whole gameplay though is that you do you do um. Everything that you earn, it's it, it takes multiple hours of play to earn them. So, when it comes to the Gideon Coffin and the Dynamics abilities, when it like the Soul Vault, the Soul Leech, and things like that, uh, that that's like that's like you earn that during the middle of the game, and that will probably take you around you know 15, you know almost 20 hours before you actually unlock your second ability for your 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 getting coffin and when it comes to the 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 attack modes what i was just talking about there you earn that after you beat the game so there's a lot of there's a lot of gameplay aspects that i'm pretty sure a lot of reviewers or a lot of people that that tried the game out they didn't even learn or didn't even unlock because it takes so long for you to um unlock those abilities i'm not i'm not saying that it's a it's a crazy idea, but I don't think it was well executed because it just takes way too long. It's like, oh, I get all the cool stuff after I beat the game, but I get it because it's a games as a service, so they want you to keep playing. So, you know, to to reward you for actually completing the story of the game, um, he's like, here now you can you can really play the game with all the cool abilities that you get. <laughs> But, you know, looking at some of the reviews and all the things that people are saying about it, yeah, you could definitely tell that a lot of people did not complete the game or even get to that midpoint of the game to unlock some of these abilities. Like, you unlock, like, accessories later in the game where instead of just one accessory, you can unlock three. Uh, your Gideon Coffin, uh, you unlock that ability, like, you know, you know midway into the, into the game. And then the attack modes and a whole bunch of stuff you unlock after you complete the game um but yeah like when you complete the game you're you can turn your character to like one real powerful sentinel where you can have a power level up to the hundreds from what i'm seeing um you can craft so many super like crazy weapons and then you can enchant your weapons so you can actually power up your weapons now after you beat the game because when you beat the game uh, they give you this ability to where you can pretty much upgrade your weapons like different levels so you can you can you can up them I think like 10 times uh, where you're, you're, you're say you have like a level 60 uh, you know sword you know after you beat the game you know you can you can max that up to like 10 times so you can get it up to like, I think like 80 at 60 but you know weapons on a base level can go up to 70 or, or 80 so you can get it up to 100 or more if you want to and then you can mend your weapons where you can combine two different weapons and make it more powerful and all of that but mending you unlock that you know during the middle middle or close to the end of the game but in enhancing your weapons you unlock that after you beat the game so yeah that's that's those little weird aspects uh of the game uh i feel that they could you can unlock those things they should have made you unlock those things much quicker uh, but overall, I understand it because it is a games of service and they want you to keep playing now that you beat the game. You have a whole bunch of stuff that you can be doing uh, within the game. Uh, so, yeah, gameplay. I really like the gameplay a lot. I like the multiplayer aspect of the game. It's really simple. The performance is amazing. The story is really good in this game. Uh, I, I felt like the story was going to be weak, but honestly, the story was pretty cool, man. Uh, you know, you find out a lot of secrets about this world, the true me, the true uh, Babylonian or Babel uh, aspect of the world. 
uh what's what's behind the blue sun and the the the, the blue um like poison thing that you know one of the characters is going uh through so yeah overall the story was pretty cool man sitting down and listening to it uh i really i really enjoyed the story i'm not going to spoil the story here because it's one of those you know reveal you know a great secret type of story so i don't want to really spoil it but i think if you pay attention uh you know overall people will enjoy the story of this game music music is amazing i love the music in this game uh you know especially when it comes to the boss fights like I, when it comes to music and and like boss fights that things get me hype and this this music uh for this game with the boss fights gets me really really hype um so yeah overall i love the music it's just one of those classic square enix uh you know musical scores you know platinum game scores and it's really good <laughs> it's really really good so my overall score for the game is a 7.2 out of 10 i'm giving the game a 7.2 out of 10 because i do like the story i love the gameplay um for this game even though there's a lot left to be desired especially when it the first time it was revealed and the things that you can do especially with the character that and the race that i've chose with the soul vault there's just a lot of things that you can't do with the soul vault that was originally shown like in the air soul vaulting but uh overall the combo structure and everything was pretty good and i liked it a lot uh the level design of the game i think it was really really good as well where you know after you pretty much beat like the volcanic area or during the volcanic area the level design really stepped up and then it added more gameplay uh or game modes into the game like skirmishes skirmishes and like other little missions that you can do where the the level design got really really fun and really wonky like it made you think a lot as far as like okay what i gotta do here to destroy this enemy but also stay alive within the level of the game so yeah level design gameplay the story was good uh i think the games of the service aspect of this game was pretty good as well where it's very generous of giving you a lot of money and gear and materials so you can craft things and all that stuff it is really generous but overall the graphics oh it also the performance was really rock solid which is always a great thing graphics um a little bit left to desire when it comes to gameplay and um you know uh just overall in my opinion i felt like the story was cool but i wanted more out of the story i felt like the game could have been a much longer you know what i mean uh with the game but there's still a lot left to be desired and i understand that that portion because of the games of service they don't want to give you all of the full meal they want to you know spoon feed you with it but i have to rate it on how i feel uh, over after i fit complete the game so i'm giving it a 7.2 out of 10 that is my final score i do think people will have some fun with this game uh, if they give it a chance and play it uh there's a lot there's a lot of cool aspects in the game especially the multiplayer side uh, if you like this multiplayer, you like playing with friends, this is a game for you. If you like getting gear and loot, this is a game for you. But uh, just know that you're not getting everything right away uh, in this one portion. You're going to get that, you know, later on. So they did have the uh, the roadmap as far as season one, which you're going to get more modes. You're going to get uh, a large scale update, you know, giving a, a new faction, some new weapons, new bosses and that near uh autom auto uh, automata uh collaboration uh is coming as well and there's more story aspects as well coming but i just got a review as far as what i what i played now i did i didn't like the fact that you had to wait to get a lot of um you know things to be unlocked within the story so long you gotta wait so long like after that you beat the game now you can do a whole bunch of crazy stuff that i wish you could have did during the um the actual game uh as you was playing it but uh yeah that's my review score a 7.2 out of 10 and yeah i think babylon fall is a cool game but enjoy the rest of the gameplay that i have here We're doing some co-op with some pc guys here and we about to destroy this boss real quick but that's my review i'm jay bari let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i'm gone deuces hopefully you pick up babylon fall and give it a chance i'm gone enjoy